In the realm of ancient history and archaeology, few theories have stirred the public imagination as much as those proposed by Eric von Deniken and Zechariah Sitchin. Both men stand as towering figures in the field of ancient astronaut theory, a concept that suggests extraterrestrial beings visited Earth in antiquity, influencing and shaping human civilization in ways that echo through our myths, legends, and archaeological records. These theories, while often met with skepticism and critique from the mainstream academic community, have found an eager audience among those fascinated by the mysteries of our past and the possibilities of extraterrestrial life. They have fueled numerous documentaries, books, and internet debates, sparking a cultural phenomenon that straddles the line between academic history and popular pseudoscience. Erich von Däniken, best known for his book Chariots of the Gods, and Zechariah Zitchin, renowned for his series The Earth Chronicles, have each put forth bold assertions about the nature of our ancient past. Their theories propose a radical reinterpretation of human history, suggesting that gods and deities worshipped by ancient civilizations were in fact extraterrestrial visitors. But what if we take a closer look at these narratives from a historical, archaeological, and scientific point of view? Would we maintain the idea that we have been visited by extraterrestrials in our ancient past? How do Eric von Däniken and Zechariah Sitchin's theories fit into a historical perspective? Does archaeology and history support these theories? Is it possible that we have misunderstood our past? Could the ruins of ancient Sumer, Egypt, and other civilizations be evidence of contact with advanced extraterrestrial life as von Däniken and Sitchin assert? This exploration aims to delve deeply into the works of von Däniken and Sitchin in order to understand their assumptions, reflect on their theories, and grasp their impact while comparing their ideas from an academic perspective. We will examine the works of two scholars, George Smith and Samuel Noah Kramer. As we embark on this journey, we invite you to maintain an open mind, question assumptions, and critically analyze the evidence presented. Are von Däniken and Sitchin pioneers bravely challenging the status quo, or are their theories a misinterpretation of our ancient past? The answer may surprise you. Eric Anton Paul von Däniken, a Swiss author born on the 14th of April 1935, has had an undeniable influence on the promotion of the ancient astronaut hypothesis. Despite a background that includes criminal convictions for embezzlement, fraud, and forgery, his passionate interest in the possibility of extraterrestrial influences on early human culture led him to write the best-selling book Chariots of the Gods in 1968. This book, alongside his later works, played a significant role in popularizing the paleo-contact and ancient astronauts hypotheses. As a young man, von Däniken developed an interest in astronomy and flying saucers, fueling his later works. His journey into writing about ancient astronauts started while working as a manager of the Hotel Rosenhügel in Davos, Switzerland, where he wrote Chariots of the Gods. Despite initial rejections, his manuscript was eventually published, sparking widespread interest and becoming a bestseller. The ancient astronaut hypothesis, as proposed by von Däniken and others, suggests that much of human knowledge, religion, and culture came from extraterrestrial visitors in ancient times. This theory posits that these ancient astronauts may have built many of the structures on Earth or aided humans in building them. Proponents of this idea argue that documentary gaps in historical and archaeological records, as well as artifacts deemed anachronistic or beyond the accepted technical capabilities of the cultures they're associated with, provide evidence for this hypothesis. However, this hypothesis has been met with widespread skepticism, 
Scholars argue that gaps in knowledge are not evidence of ancient astronauts, and proponents have not provided any convincing physical or documentary evidence to substantiate their claims. Furthermore, the narratives cited as evidence of ancient astronaut contact are often considered to be misinterpretations, hoaxes, or distortions. Despite these criticisms, von Däniken's books have had a broad cultural impact. His interpretation of ancient art and iconography proposes that these pieces depict air and space vehicles, intelligent non-human creatures, and artifacts of anachronistically advanced technology. He also states that geographically separated historical cultures share artistic themes, implying a common origin. One example is the interpretation of the sarcophagus lid recovered from the tomb of Pakal the Great, a Maya ruler, which von Däniken suggests represents a seated astronaut. In addition, von Däniken posits that the origins of many religions could be interpreted as reactions to encounters with an alien race. According to his view, humans perceived the technology of the aliens as supernatural and saw the aliens themselves as gods. He also interprets the origins of many religions as being reactions to encounters with an alien race. In his view, humans considered the technology of the aliens to be supernatural and the aliens themselves to be gods. Even though von Däniken's views have been widely criticized, they have contributed to a broader discussion about the possibility of extraterrestrial life and its potential impact on humanity. His writings led to serious consideration of the idea that human narratives could be a potential means of describing contact with aliens. Some scientists and scholars consider that this idea has an argument that does not support and presents data that are not reliable. Von Däniken's work had notable influences, shaping a narrative that questioned the origins and progress of human civilization. His theories inspired countless works of fiction and non-fiction, leading to the creation of films, television series, and even this channel. As controversial as they are, von Däniken's theories illustrate the human fascination with the unknown and our collective curiosity about our origins and the universe. Whether seen as pseudoscience or a provocative challenge to established views, his ideas continue to spur debate and fuel the human imagination. Now we turn our attention to another prominent figure who delved into the realms of ancient mysteries and extraterrestrial influence. Zechariah Sitchin Zechariah Sitchin was a renowned author and proponent of the ancient astronaut theory. Born in 1920 and passing in 2010, his work has been influential in shaping discussions about extraterrestrial influence on ancient civilizations. Sitchin was best known for his series of books called The Earth Chronicles, which delve into his interpretations of ancient Sumerian and other Mesopotamian texts. Sitchin's primary thesis was that a race of extraterrestrial beings known as the Anunnaki from the planet Nibiru came to Earth approximately 450,000 years ago. According to Sitchin, these beings were instrumental in the creation of humanity. He proposed that the Anunnaki genetically engineered Homo sapiens as a labor force for their mining operations, thereby sparking the rise of civilization as we know it. This theory is most famously expressed in his book, The Twelfth Planet, the first in the Earth Chronicles series. His interpretations of ancient Sumerian texts also suggested that these extraterrestrial beings played a significant role in human history and were even deified by our ancestors. Sitchin's work has generated considerable debate with critics questioning his translations and interpretations of the Sumerian texts. Nevertheless, his theories have found a receptive audience among those interested in ancient astronaut and ancient aliens theories. 
A key aspect of Sitchin's work was his examination of ancient artifacts and structures. He proposed that many of these, which seemed to exhibit a level of knowledge and sophistication inexplicable for their time, were actually influenced or directly produced by the Anunnaki. His writings have thus spurred a reevaluation of artifacts and architectural feats from a perspective outside traditional archaeological interpretations. Zechariah Sitchin's seminal work, The Twelfth Planet, was a significant contribution to the field of ancient astronaut theories. Published in 1976, the book introduced readers to a radical new interpretation of ancient Sumerian texts, suggesting evidence of extraterrestrial involvement in early human history. At the heart of Sitchin's theory lies the hypothetical planet Nibiru, often referred to as the Twelfth Planet. According to Sitchin, the Sumerians' advanced knowledge in astronomy led them to discover this distant planet that supposedly orbits our sun every 3,600 years. This claim, while controversial, captivated readers and stirred intriguing questions about our understanding of the solar system and human civilization's origins. Sitchin's theories primarily revolve around the Sumerians, an ancient civilization that thrived in Mesopotamia, modern-day Iraq, over 6,000 years ago. Sitchin's studies of Sumerian cuneiform tablets led him to some intriguing conclusions. Sitchin proposed that the inhabitants of Nibiru, known as the Anunnaki, were responsible for significant advancements in human civilization. He suggested that these ancient astronauts visited Earth during their planet's close passes, sharing knowledge and even genetically influencing early humans. This theory, while unorthodox, provides an alternative perspective on the sudden rise of sophisticated civilizations in the ancient world. He argued that the Sumerians had knowledge of all the planets in our solar system, including those not visible to the naked eye. This advanced astronomical understanding was, in Sitchin's view, evidence of extraterrestrial influence. He proposed that the Sumerians were visited by beings from Nibiru, who imparted their advanced knowledge and influenced the course of human civilization. A key piece of evidence supporting Sitchin's theories is the Sumerian creation myth, the Epic of Creation, also known as the Enuma Elish. In this ancient narrative, Sitchin interpreted references to celestial bodies clashing as evidence of the existence of Nibiru and its role in shaping our solar system. Furthermore, he suggested that the Anunnaki, a group of deities in ancient Mesopotamian cultures, were in fact extraterrestrial beings from Nibiru. Sitchin's interpretation of Sumerian iconography also provides intriguing insights. For instance, he pointed to depictions of winged discs and humanoid figures with bird heads as potential representations of extraterrestrial beings and their spacecraft. Similarly, the depiction of the Tree of Life in various artifacts, according to Sitchin, could symbolize genetic knowledge or experimentation, hinting at the Anunnaki's supposed role in genetically modifying early humans. However, it is essential to note that Sitchin's theories have been met with significant criticism. Many researchers, historians, and scientists have disputed his interpretations of Sumerian texts and artifacts, arguing that they reflect a misunderstanding or misinterpretation of ancient cultures and their symbolism. Moreover, astronomers have yet to find conclusive evidence of Nibiru's existence in our solar system. While his theories remain controversial, Sitchin's work has undeniably inspired a renewed interest in our ancient past and the mysteries it holds. Moreover, Sitchin argued that the Anunnaki's interactions with humans influenced our religious and mythological narratives, pointing to similarities across various cultures' ancient stories. This claim adds another layer to our understanding of how religions may have been shaped by contact with these advanced beings. 
In comparing the theories of Eric von Däniken and Zechariah Sitchin, both proponents of the ancient astronaut theory, it's important to note the overlaps and distinctions that set their work apart. They converge on certain points, such as the belief in extraterrestrial intervention in the past and its influence on human civilization, but diverge in their interpretations of specific events, cultures, and artifacts. Von Däniken and Sitchin both propose that advanced extraterrestrial civilizations visited Earth in ancient times and influenced humanity's technological and cultural development. They suggest that this interaction is reflected in ancient monuments, artifacts, and texts, which they interpret as containing evidence of advanced technology or knowledge beyond what would have been possible for the civilizations of the time. Both theorists examine various ancient sites and cultures around the world drawing connections between disparate civilizations and proposing that similarities in their monuments, artwork, and myths can be attributed to shared extraterrestrial influence. Von Daniken, for example, examines structures like the Egyptian pyramids and the Moai of Easter Island, while Sitchin focuses extensively on ancient Sumerian texts and mythology. Despite these similarities, Von Däniken and Sitchin's theories differ in significant ways. Von Däniken largely presents a broad, cross-cultural examination of various artifacts and structures worldwide, suggesting that they reflect more sophisticated technology than is presumed to have existed at the time they were created. He argues that these artifacts and structures were likely produced either directly by extraterrestrial visitors or by humans who acquired knowledge from them. Sitchin, on the other hand, focuses more specifically on the ancient Sumerian civilization and their texts. He interprets these texts to propose that they describe a specific group of extraterrestrials, the Anunnaki, who came from a yet undiscovered planet in our solar system, Nibiru. Sitchin's interpretation of the texts suggests that the Anunnaki genetically engineered humanity and played a direct role in the creation of our species. While von Däniken's theories often suggest that ancient humans may have interpreted these visitors as gods, leading to the development of various religious beliefs, Sitchin delves deeper into this concept, proposing that the Anunnaki were the basis for many of the gods in ancient mythologies, and their interactions with humans directly shaped our religious and mythological narratives. Another key difference lies in their approach to evidence and methodology. Von Däniken often refers to visual and architectural evidence, such as carvings, structures, and other physical artifacts from various cultures across the world. He interprets these artifacts to suggest the presence of advanced technology and knowledge, often inferring an extraterrestrial source. Sitchin, meanwhile, focuses heavily on linguistic and textual evidence, particularly from the cuneiform texts of ancient Sumer. His translations and interpretations of these texts form the core of his argument for the existence and influence of the Anunnaki. The theories of Eric von Däniken and Zechariah Sitchin centralizing around ancient astronauts and the Anunnaki, respectively, have left an indelible mark on popular culture and the realm of unconventional historical inquiry. Their work has led to the emergence of a new perspective in understanding the mysteries of the past, one that fuses mythos with technology, human civilization with extraterrestrial intervention. This perspective is most commonly known as the ancient astronaut theory. The impact of these theories on popular culture is perhaps most evident in the visual and literary arts. Numerous books, films, and television series have drawn inspiration from the ideas put forth by von Däniken and Sitchin. The Ancient Aliens series of the History Channel, for instance, features discussions of their theories in an ongoing exploration of historical and archaeological mysteries. The show's popularity underscores the resonance of these ideas with a broad audience 
reflecting a widespread fascination with the possibility of extraterrestrial involvement in human history. This fascination extends beyond television to permeate various forms of media and entertainment. Films like Prometheus and Stargate incorporate elements of the ancient astronaut theory in their narratives. In literature, science fiction authors have also explored these themes, weaving intricate tales of ancient civilizations guided by alien hands. Even in the world of video games, titles like Assassin's Creed showcase a rich tapestry of history, interlaced with an extraterrestrial narrative, echoing the theories of Von Däniken and Sitchin. The influence of Von Däniken and Sitchin's theories has also sparked a profound interest in ancient civilizations and their mysteries. Their work has inspired a generation of amateur archaeologists and historians encouraging individuals to question conventional understandings of history and to consider alternative explanations. This enthusiasm has led to a proliferation of websites, online forums, and social media communities dedicated to exploring and debating the ancient astronaut theory. Despite the mainstream academic community's skepticism towards these unconventional theories, their cultural impact is undeniable. They have prompted a reevaluation of ancient texts, artifacts, and structures, inspiring a sense of wonder about the mysteries of the past and our place in the universe. The theories of von Däniken and Sitchin have, in essence, infused popular culture with a deeper appreciation for the enigmatic narratives of antiquity, narratives that continue to captivate us to this day. But I can assure you that those ancient astronaut theorists are not crazy, worthless conspiracy theorists. In fact, the ancient astronaut theory is based on historical facts, archaeological discoveries, and a certain amount of logical thinking. The Anunnaki, as described in the ancient texts, were a pantheon of gods and demigods who were believed to have descended to Earth from the heavens, playing a significant role in the creation and development of human civilization. They were revered, feared, and worshipped by the ancient Sumerians, Akkadians, Assyrians, and Babylonians, who attributed to them not only the genesis of humanity, but also the establishment of culture, knowledge, and civilization itself. So that we can observe these facts, we will rely on scientific information from the authors George Smith and Samuel Noah Kramer. Later on this channel, we can better know this author's, their stories, and their books. For now, we will find ourselves in a journey through specific information on their books. We will try to answer one important question. Anunnaki and ancient astronaut theory find a theory supported and grounded in historical facts and valid archaeological information. We will examine the evidence, scrutinize the myths, and seek to uncover the truth behind these enigmatic beings. This is not just a journey into the past, but a quest for understanding that bridges the gap between mythology and science, between faith and reason, and between the human and the divine. The Sumerians, the earliest known civilization in the historical region of southern Mesopotamia, have left an indelible mark on human history. Emerging in the late 4th millennium BC, they established a complex society marked by advancements in various fields, from architecture and agriculture to law and literature. The Sumerians are credited with the invention of cuneiform writing, one of the earliest known forms of writing. This system, as seen in the book The Chaldean Account of Genesis, was used to record the epic tales of heroes and gods including the Anunnaki, providing us with invaluable insights into their beliefs and worldview. The Sumerians were not just pioneers in writing, they were also skilled builders and engineers. They constructed impressive city-states, each with its own distinct architecture and infrastructure. These cities, such as Eridu, Nippur, and Uruk, were considered sacred 
and were believed to be under the patronage of a specific deity from the Anunnaki pantheon. The Sumerians' religious practices were deeply intertwined with their daily lives. They built grand temples known as ziggurats, dedicated to their gods. The Anunnaki were central to their religious beliefs, with each city-state having a patron deity from among the Anunnaki. In the realm of law and governance, the Sumerians were ahead of their time. They developed one of the earliest known legal codes, with laws covering various aspects of society, including trade, property rights, and family law. This legal system, along with their structured bureaucracy, allowed them to manage their cities effectively. The Sumerians also made significant strides in the field of astronomy, which was closely linked to their religious beliefs. They studied the stars and planets, which they associated with the Anunnaki. This knowledge was used not only for religious purposes, but also for practical applications, such as agriculture and navigation. The Sumerian civilization, with its rich culture and advanced knowledge, laid the foundation for subsequent civilizations in Mesopotamia. Their influence can be seen in the Akkadian, Babylonian, and Assyrian cultures that followed. The Akkadian civilization, a fascinating chapter in human history, emerged in the ancient Near East around 2350 BC. This civilization, named after its capital city Akkad, was the first empire of the world, uniting the diverse city-states of Sumer under one rule. The Akkadians were Semitic people, distinct from the Sumerians, yet they adopted and adapted much of the Sumerian culture, including their cuneiform writing system. This system of writing, developed by the Sumerians, was adopted by nearly all the peoples of the Near East and facilitated the cultural progress of Western Asia. The Akkadian Empire was a hub of innovation and progress. They were known for their advancements in various fields, such as woodworking, metalworking, writing, toolmaking, and leatherworking. These arts of civilization were not only practiced, but also highly valued as evident from the ancient texts. The Akkadians were also known for their military prowess. They expanded their empire through conquests, bringing various city-states under their control. This expansion was not merely territorial, but also cultural as they spread their language, culture, and administrative practices across the region. However, the Akkadian civilization was not just about conquests and innovations. They also had a rich spiritual and religious life. They developed religious concepts and a well-integrated pantheon that profoundly influenced all the peoples of the Near East, including the Hebrews and the Greeks. The Akkadian pantheon was a complex system of gods and goddesses, each with their own roles and responsibilities. In the realm of literature, the Akkadians produced a vast and highly developed body of work. Their literature, largely poetic in character, consisted of epics, myths, hymns, lamentations, proverbs, and words of wisdom. These compositions, inscribed in cuneiform script on clay tablets, provide us with a glimpse into the minds and hearts of the Akkadians. The Akkadian civilization, despite its eventual decline, left a lasting legacy. Its influence can be seen in the subsequent civilizations of the Near East and beyond. The Akkadian language, for instance, continued to be used as the language of diplomacy and literature for centuries after the fall of the Akkadian Empire. For now on, we will delve deeper into the myths and legends of the Sumerian and Akkadian civilization, particularly their beliefs about the Anunnaki and the role these deities played in their society. Now, we are not considering Zechariah Sitchin's work and his definition on the term Anunnaki as those from heaven to earth came. To understand the knowledge of science, archaeology, and traditional history about the Mesopotamian clay tablets, we need to forget, for a moment, 
The Anunnaki theory from Zechariah Sitchin, as well as the Lost Book of Enki, and even the Anunnaki movies from Anunnaki Ancient Mystery Channel. For traditional science, the term Anunnaki in ancient Sumerian or Akkadian means those of royal blood or princely offspring. These divine beings, as depicted in Sumerian mythology, are believed to have played a significant role in shaping human civilization. The Anunnaki are often associated with the city of Erech, also known as Uruk, a major city in ancient Sumer. As described in the The Chaldean Account of Genesis by George Smith, the city was devoted to the worship of Anu, the god of heaven, and his wife, the goddess Anatu. The city was ruled by a queen named Istar, or Ishtar, who was considered the daughter of Anu and Anatu. The Anunnaki were deeply involved in the affairs of humanity, guiding, influencing, and sometimes directly intervening in human events. They were revered, feared, and worshipped by the ancient Sumerians, who attributed to them not only the genesis of humanity, but also the establishment of culture, knowledge, and civilization itself. The Anunnaki were not just passive observers, but active participants in human history. They were believed to have bestowed upon humanity the knowledge of agriculture, law, mathematics, and the arts, the very foundations of civilization. This belief is explored in detail in the book Sumerian Mythology by Samuel Noah Kramer. The Anunnaki were also associated with the quest for immortality, as recounted in the book The Chaldean Account of the Deluge by George Smith. In this book, Smith brings us to the ancient world and through the narrative of the ancient mythology, written many years before the Hebrew Bible. The text tells the story of the hero Izdabar, later known as Gilgamesh, and his journey to seek immortality, guided by the wisdom of the Anunnaki. In Sumerian mythology, the Anunnaki were not just deities, but also symbols of the forces of nature, the cosmos, and human society. They were seen as the mediators between humans and the divine, the bearers of divine wisdom and the guardians of moral and social order. The Anunnaki, while originating from Sumerian mythology, also held significant roles in the mythologies of the Akkadian and Assyrian civilizations that succeeded the Sumerians. These civilizations while distinct in their own right, inherited and adapted much of the Sumerian culture, including their religious beliefs and myths surrounding the Anunnaki. In Akkadian mythology, the Anunnaki were revered as powerful deities who were involved in the creation of the world and the establishment of civilization. They were often depicted as divine judges who decreed the fates of humanity. The Akkadians, like the Sumerians, believed that the Anunnaki had a significant influence on their society, from their laws and moral codes to their arts and sciences. The Akkadian pantheon of gods was led by Anu, the sky god, who was also a prominent figure in Sumerian mythology. Other notable Anunnaki in Akkadian mythology included Enlil, the god of wind and storm, and Ea, also known as Enki, the god of water and wisdom. These gods, along with others, were believed to guide and protect the Akkadian people. In Assyrian mythology, the Anunnaki were also highly revered. The Assyrians, known for their military prowess and expansive empire, viewed the Anunnaki as divine patrons of their royal lineage and their cities. The Assyrian kings often depicted themselves in their inscriptions and monuments as chosen by the Anunnaki to rule and to expand their empire. The Anunnaki were also associated with the underworld in both Akkadian and Assyrian mythologies. They were believed to be the judges of the dead, determining the fate of the souls in the afterlife. This aspect of the Anunnaki further highlights their role as arbiters of justice and order in the cosmos. 
Continuing from the roles of the Anunnaki as arbiters of justice and order in the cosmos, we now turn our attention to one of the most significant literary works of the ancient world that prominently features these deities, the Epic of Gilgamesh. The Epic of Gilgamesh, an ancient Mesopotamian poem written in cuneiform script, is considered one of the oldest known works of literature. This epic tale, which predates even the Bible, tells the story of the eponymous hero, Gilgamesh, a legendary king of Uruk, and his quest for immortality. The significance of the Epic of Gilgamesh extends beyond its literary merit. It provides a window into the beliefs, values, and struggles of the ancient Sumerians. The epic is replete with references to the Anunnaki, highlighting their integral role in Sumerian mythology and culture. In the epic, Gilgamesh, who is described as two-thirds god and one-third human, encounters several members of the Anunnaki pantheon. These encounters reveal the complex relationship between humans and gods in Sumerian society. The gods are depicted as powerful and sometimes capricious beings, but they are also shown to be capable of compassion and wisdom. The Epic of Gilgamesh is a myth of adventure, friendship, loss, and the human struggle with mortality, woven together with the threads of divine intervention and ancient wisdom. Gilgamesh's journey is not just a physical quest, but also a spiritual and emotional transformation. Gilgamesh's closest companion is Enkidu, a wild man created by the gods to counterbalance Gilgamesh's tyranny. Enkidu's friendship softens Gilgamesh, and his death triggers Gilgamesh's existential crisis and his quest for immortality. Enkidu serves as a mirror to Gilgamesh, reflecting both his strengths and his vulnerabilities. The gods and goddesses of the Anunnaki also play crucial roles in the epic. They are not distant deities, but active participants in the story, guiding, challenging, and sometimes punishing the characters. Their actions reveal the ancient Sumerians' understanding the divine as forces that shape human destiny. One of the key themes in the epic of Gilgamesh is the human quest for immortality. One of the most intriguing characters in the epic is Utnapishtim, the man who was granted immortality by the gods. His story, which bears striking similarities to the biblical story of Noah, offers a profound reflection on the nature of life, death, and the human longing for immortality. Gilgamesh, spurred by the death of his friend Enkidu, embarks on a perilous journey to seek eternal life. The Epic of Gilgamesh, with its rich narrative and multi-dimensional characters, offers a wealth of insights into the human condition. It explores themes of friendship, the abuse of power, the fear of death, and the quest for immortality, making it a timeless piece of literature that continues to resonate with readers today. The Anunnaki, as depicted in the Epic of Gilgamesh, play pivotal roles that shape the narrative and its characters. They are not merely passive observers, but active participants in the unfolding drama, influencing the course of events and the destiny of the characters. The Anunnaki are portrayed as powerful deities with distinct personalities and domains. They are involved in various aspects of the epic, from the creation of Enkidu to the granting of immortality to Utnapishtim. Their actions and decisions often serve as catalysts for the events in the epic. One of the key Anunnaki figures in the epic is one more time, Anu, the sky god. Anu is invoked several times in the epic, reflecting his high status in the pantheon. He is also the father of Ishtar, the goddess of love and war, who plays a significant role in the epic. Ishtar, attracted to Gilgamesh's beauty, proposes marriage to him. However, Gilgamesh rejects her, leading to a series of events that result in the death of Enkidu. Ishtar's role in the epic illustrates the capricious nature of the gods and their direct influence on human affairs. Another important Anunnaki in the epic is Enlil, the god of wind and storm. 
Enlil is depicted as a powerful and sometimes fearsome deity. He is the one who decrees the Great Flood. The Deluge, or the Great Flood, is a pivotal event in the Epic of Gilgamesh, and it holds a significant place in Sumerian mythology. This myth, which tells of a catastrophic flood sent by the gods to wipe out humanity, has parallels in many cultures around the world, including the biblical story of Noah's Ark. In the Sumerian version of the Dilug myth, the gods, led by Enlil, decide to send a flood to destroy mankind. However, the god Ea, also known as Enki, who is often associated with wisdom and cunning, warns Utnapishtim of the impending disaster and instructs him to build a large boat to save himself, his family, and a selection of animals. The Deluge myth is significant for several reasons. Firstly, it underscores the power and authority of the Anunnaki. The decision to send the Flood is a demonstration of their control over the natural world and the fate of humanity. However, it also reveals a degree of discord among the gods, as evidenced by Ea's decision to defy Enlil's decree and save Utnapishtim. Secondly, the Deluge myth explores themes of survival, obedience, and divine justice. Utnapishtim's survival is not due to luck or chance, but to his obedience to Ea's instructions. His reward for his obedience is immortality granted to him by the gods. The Deluge myth has had a profound influence on later flood narratives, most notably the biblical story of Noah. The similarities between the two stories, a divine decision to send a flood, a warning to a righteous man, the construction of a boat, the collection of animals, and the eventual survival of the man and his family are striking. Nevertheless, this event is a clear demonstration of the immense power the Anunnaki wield over the world and the lives of humans. Another key Anunnaki figure in the epic is Ishtar, the goddess of love and war. Her interactions with Gilgamesh, particularly her proposal of marriage and subsequent wrath when Gilgamesh rejects her, set off a chain of events that lead to the death of Enkidu and Gilgamesh's subsequent quest for immortality. Ishtar's role in the epic illustrates the complex and often tumultuous relationship between humans and the gods. The Anunnaki, through their interactions with the characters, reveal the complex relationship between humans and gods in ancient Sumerian society. They are seen as both benefactors and tormentors, giving blessings and meeting out punishments. The roles of the Anunnaki in the Epic of Gilgamesh provide a deeper understanding of how the ancient Sumerians viewed their gods. They were not distant, impersonal beings, but active participants in human affairs, capable of both great benevolence and severe retribution. This dynamic relationship between humans and the Anunnaki is a central theme in the epic, reflecting the deeply ingrained belief in the divine's direct influence on human life. The Anunnaki, according to the ancient texts, were not just divine beings to be worshipped, they were also teachers, lawgivers, and technologists. The ancient Sumerians believed that it was the Anunnaki who taught them the art of writing, known as cuneiform. In addition to writing, the Anunnaki were also associated with the establishment of laws and societal norms. The Code of Hammurabi, one of the oldest deciphered legal texts, is said to have been inspired by the divine laws of the Anunnaki. Moreover, the Anunnaki were believed to have introduced advanced architectural techniques including the construction of ziggurats, massive stepped towers that served as religious centers. These structures, which required sophisticated engineering and mathematical knowledge, are testament to the advanced civilization of ancient Sumer. The influence of the Anunnaki extended to agriculture as well. Ancient texts speak of the Anunnaki teaching humans how to cultivate the land, introducing them to irrigation techniques, and showing them how to grow and harvest crops. 
These contributions of the Anunnaki, as depicted in ancient texts, suggest a profound influence on the development of human civilization. They portray the Anunnaki not just as gods to be revered, but also as benefactors of humanity, playing a direct role in the advancement of human society. Now that we have explored these aspects in greater detail, let's return to the idea that historical and archaeological knowledge support the evidence for the ancient aliens theory. The ancient astronaut theory proposes that these advancements were the direct result of extraterrestrial intervention. As we delve deeper into the influence of the Anunnaki on human civilization, it becomes evident that the intriguing connections to the ancient astronaut theory cannot be overlooked. This theory gained popularity in the latter half of the 20th century, suggesting that beings from outer space visited our planet in ancient times and played a substantial role in shaping the progress of human civilization. The ancient astronaut theory examines the technological and cultural leaps in human history, such as the sudden emergence of advanced architectural techniques and complex societal structures, and argues that these advancements were too sophisticated to have developed without external intervention. Proponents of this theory often highlight the Anunnaki as the extraterrestrial influencers. Furthermore, the theory suggests that the Anunnaki were not merely mythological gods, but instead were flesh and blood extraterrestrials. This interpretation is based on various elements found in the ancient texts, including descriptions of the Anunnaki descending from the sky and their ability to traverse between heaven and earth. Perhaps the most intriguing and persuasive argument is the first sentence of a mythological text known as the Sumerian King List. In future videos, we can delve deeper into the content of this text. But for now, to conclude this reflection, let us focus our attention on the opening sentence of the list of kings from the oldest civilization in human history. It states, after the kingship descended from heaven, maybe, there is no need for debate if we carefully consider and delve into the knowledge of these texts. All sacred texts from various religions indicate that God, messengers, or even gods themselves came from heaven or descended from the skies or above. In the earliest civilizations of human history, we can understand that the kingship descended from heaven. So I ask you, what now? Is it reasonable for us to deny this possibility? Or perhaps we should reconsider and reshape our society while examining these assumptions? For me, I have no doubts. I can feel it deeply in every cell of my body. Extraterrestrial life is a reality, whether we like it or not. And they, they came from heaven using spaceships and bestowed upon us the knowledge to create our society. Thank you for watching this video and make possible for me to be here producing the content I love. If you found this content valuable, please subscribe, like, and share it with your friends and family. I hope to see you in another video like the ones appearing on your screen.